just thought I would catch up with you all about some of the sister hacks that we've been putting live on the sister page. These hacks can be shared on your pages as long as you keep our web page um, Earl up there uh, so that people can see where the source material came from. They're really helpful for clients too. I find like being able to hand something out to them or point them in the direction of where there's some real information. It can be helpful in your consults or if your clients are having any problems, you can send them via emails. Okay, so let's uh, get into it. I'm just gonna get some notes up so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so recycled um, dreads, like you'll get a lot of people contacting you in reference to wanting to sell their dreadlocks that they've cut off. Uh, this is a great way of being able to offer a product to your clients that is um, not just new hair or or synthetic hair or wool hair, but hair that you know where the source came from and et cetera, et cetera. So this is the process. Look, for most people that come in to sell you their locks, you're not going to want to buy them. There's lots of reasons for that, but two that really stick out in my mind. Um, first up is the condition of the dread, which will be how was the dread made, what products have been used on the dread, and what condition is the scalp in. Super hard to know what condition the scalp was in unless you actually can you've known the client and sometimes that will be the case um, but there is another way of finding that out so to be polite when they hand you the dreads you just step out the back room just to have a quick look combing out 10 centimeters of the dread is going to give you a lot of information it's going to first of all tell you whether or not they're over crocheted because if they are they'll be broken and you won't be able to comb out the end at all uh, they can still be used but they're difficult to work with interlocking that will be the knots that people put in. That is a, an absolute no from me. Uh, the reason for that is because build-up happens at the knot and you can't give a client a product that's full of someone else's um, um, scalp deposits. So a no to that. And also when you comb out, you'll see if there's any um, issues with the dread. Like there could be some... Um, scalp flakes in there, some uh, build up from things like sheets and hats and bedding. Uh, those things are easy to dissolve and to get rid of. Um, but if the um, center of the dread is wet or contains any kind of like substance that's um, a wet substance, that means that they've not washed their dreads properly and not dried them properly and you're looking at um, a dread rot situation there. Still can be saved, but you know, I would be apprehensive about something like that. So if you decide to buy the dreads, uh, we suggest about a $5 um, per dread is a good um, amount to be able to give the person because there's a lot of process involved in getting to them the stage of actually selling them. So how? selling the dreads needs you to first of all process the dreads. So we don't want to sell a dread that actually has a build up inside it. So the first thing is the washing process. So I like to use a hot kettle, I like to use a dishwashing liquid and a cup of bicarb. You can put all this in a bucket. Uh, you can also use a dread bomb if you want, but that's a little more expensive to do with the process. That's something nicer to do at the end stage or perhaps to um, give as part of the selling process. So let them sit in there overnight and you'll then need to rinse and wash them again with the washing up liquid to make sure that all of the bicarb and substances are out of it. Rinse super well. Like I would rinse three times more than you would think you need to rinse. We need to get all of the bicarb, all of the dishwashing liquid, everything out. Now, some people prefer to comb the end out before doing this process and some people prefer to do it after the process. The benefit of doing it before um, washing is of course your um, your end will then be nice and clean when it's attached to the client's hair and there won't be any signs of build up. Uh, once they've been washed you need to then lay them out in the sun. This is a process that can take two to three days to dry them. If you have a hairdryer or one of the stand-up hairdryers that are in the salons then pop them inside that hairdryer and leave them in there for a couple of hours on low. You will still need to lay them in the sun and you will still, you'll just don't lay them on top of each other or bulk them up. 
you will need to do this by just simply uh, laying them flat on a towel, for instance, and just in a really sunny area in front of a window. I'd leave them there for a couple of days. Once that's done, you will then need to go on to the next stage. Now, if you've combed your ends out already, that's already done, fantastic. If not, now's the time to do that. You will also need to go along the length of the dread to make sure that the dread looks nice and doesn't have any flyaway. You'll then need to um, spray them with a good accelerator. There's several on the market. Uh, once they're dry and they've sprayed with lock up and they're really nice and dry, you can then move them to a pillowcase. But before putting them in the pillowcase, I like to ask the client that I'm getting the dreads off a little bit about their history. So if they've got a little story, you could pop that in the pillowcase, like type it out on a piece of paper and just pop it in there. Like, you know, today we got these dreads from Sally who um, has worn her dreads for 20 years. She started her dreads in whatever date. Um, and a little bit about Sally. That always makes the client feel a little bit better about having recycled dreads. On the pillowcase, write the size of the dread, i.e. its pencil size, um, the length of the dread, so there'll be different lengths probably, but you can say from 30 centimetres to 60 centimetres. Date is a good idea, and the colour. And then you've got a nice neat package, you can fold the package up. I often put a little bit of um, lavender or rosemary or anything that you prefer the smell of inside the pillowcase and you can actually make it look quite nice with a little bit of, um, tie it off with a little bit of rope so that when your client comes to pick it up, it's um, beautifully packaged for them or when you're putting them in and installing them, same, same. Okay, so that's our little podcast or um, video cam cast. <laughs> For today, I'm going to do a lot more uh, just to uh, keep everyone, you know, in the loop with these um, sister hacks and where they're and just try and get a little bit more out of us as a community. Okay, it was really nice chatting to you today. Um, I hope you're all having a fabulous, prosperous day. And if there's anything that you need um, to chat about, if you have any questions, if you would like us to make a particular video or sister hack about something that you feel that you would like to know about, then um, please let us know. Okay, have a beautiful day. Enjoy your, yourself in everything you're doing and show us some of the dreads that you're making. We'd love to see them. Bye.